So hello, people of God. I have a quick word of encouragement, um, and it really, it, it really encouraged me. I pray it encourages you, um, and it's such a strong word for me of encouragement. It is something that, you know, the Lord ministered to me, and it's still really fresh. It's still really fresh. The Lord is unpacking it, but I just wanted to release it so that, you know, as you go about you know, your day, well, I'm taking for granted that your day, that is 9.56 a.m. where you are, but I just want this word to minister, you know, for you because as the Lord revealed this to me today, you know, one of the things that it reminded me of, which is what God is saying to me in this hour is how serious, how serious he is about the new. Like for me, God is so serious about the new and I'm so I'm so thankful because I don't know about you, but I've missed it before. I've missed it before and I feel like the seriousness in which God is dealing with me, right? Like the Lord is leaving no stone unturned. Like he's dealing with every single situation. And so over the weekend, I kind of just had, you know, some stuff just kind of yesterday in particular. I'll just use yesterday as an example. The Lord really ministered some stuff to me. So I woke up and I was just kind of dealing with some stuff and not really sure what had happened to brought to bring about, you know, just me me kind of having a little bit of struggle with some old stuff. Like I'm like, okay. And it wasn't anything serious as far as what I was dealing with naturally, but the seriousness in which God brought about such revelation was amazing, right? And again, I say I am excited that God means business, right? God is super, super serious about the new that is our lives, right? And because of that, every single matter, every single opportunity to to respond heaven is responding by by telling me press deeper into the new yield to the new right and so the holy ghost took me to galatians 3 and 13 in the passion translation and in that passion translation the bible says that jesus completely i think it might even say utterly i'm gonna go to my bible app really quick it says that he it says Galatians 3 and 13, the Passion Translation says, Yet Jesus paid the full price to set us free from the curse of the law. He absorbed it completely as he became a curse in our place. And the Holy Ghost was saying to me, that's such strong verbiage, right? I'm telling you, God means business about the new that is our lives. And for me, you know, God was saying to me, God was saying to me, that it doesn't matter how insistent the old thing is or even how coaxing the old thing is, right? So for some of us, there may be some situations and some sin in our lives that we just, we don't want any part of. Addictions, you know, we don't want any part of it, right? Like somebody may say, you know, I'm struggling with, with some type of sexual perversion or sin and I want no part of it. Whereas somebody may be dealing with something that really is a strong temptation to their flesh and they may not want to get rid of it or a friendship. Like, like you may be like, I want to get rid of this ex that's toxic. He don't mean me no good. But that girlfriend that you love, that you kick it with, but that's still so negative, you may struggle with that friendship. Do you hear what I'm saying? And the Holy Ghost was saying to me, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's something that's, that is insistent or even something that's coaxing, something that, that, that seems reasonable, right? If it is old, if it is old, if it is the former thing, we have no part of it. Even for me, God has gone as far as to talk about, and again, I am reminded of the woman of God that talked about breaking soul ties with warfare, right? And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm moving. So, so it's a lot of stuff that's really pertinent to me. So there are a lot of, um, old warfare books that I had. And, you know, I was looking at those books and God was saying to me, you know, you're not in that season. Those things don't minister to you. You're far. So I was like, I'm throwing them away. And I've really been doing such a purging in this moving process. Right. And so the Holy Ghost was saying to me, right, 
the new thing that is our lives. It is the only thing that is ordained to be here, you know, and, and God was going as far as talking about the saturation of the new and overload of the new. The Bible speaks of Jesus saying, I came that you may have life and life more abundantly. You know, we have been denied. We have been delayed. We have been defeated for so long. It can only be an overload of the new for us at this point. It can only be exceedingly and abundantly for the new for us at this point. And I'm going to take you to another passage of scripture that the Holy Ghost gave to me that really ministered to me about the seriousness of the new. Like I'm talking about the seriousness. Like when you, okay, I'm just going to read to you what the Holy Ghost said, because this thing is so good. So he took me to Matthew 27. Again, I'm reading from the Passion Translation. And it this is the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And so here's what's so amazing about the seriousness of the crucifixion and what it really, really meant. Like this is not Jesus being resurrected. This is Jesus being crucified. So Matthew 27, starting at verse 51. Well, I'll start at verse 50. Jesus passionately cried out, took his last breath and gave up his spirit. At that moment, the veil in the Holy of Holies was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth shook violently. Rocks were split apart and graves were open. Then many of the holy ones who had died were brought back to life and came out of their graves. Listen, the, the newness of the crucifixion was so serious that Jesus' physical death brought about life. Like his physical, this is not the resurrection. This is not his ascension. This is him dying. Yet it was such a new thing that it brought life. It brought life for those that were dead. And verse 23 says, and after Jesus's resurrection, they were plainly seen by many people walking in Jerusalem. Let me tell you something, and I'm going to repeat it. I'm going to repeat it. God means business. God means business about the new that is our lives. And I'm telling you, the same way there is such strong verbiage here, the earth shook violently, rocks were split apart. Let me tell you something, right? Every old thing that can be touched will be touched. Oh, mindsets that we've had, even about how, how things work in our lives, right? Old doctrines, old old standards of living. Oh, I'm telling you, even if it doesn't seem like it's a bad thing. Okay. So maybe it's not warfare, but maybe it's just this, like God means business about the new that is our lives. And we absolutely have to press as deep and as hard as we can into saturating our lives with the new. We have to listen, we have to nurture and feed this new thing as much as possible. Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost said to me. You have to be extra about this thing. You have to be extra about this thing. You understand what I'm saying? When I read those passages of scripture, th that's strong language. That's to say Jesus completely absorbed. That means there is no way that I should be living a cursed life. Yet I've heard doctrines about coming into agreement and all kinds of stuff, right? But that's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what the Bible teaches. If we enforce the new, we don't have to worry about some legalistic way that the enemy can keep us cursed or some, some super demon, right? Like, like we, the church has made super demons and super spirits and super evil. And that is not what the Bible says. That is not what the Bible says. And so for me, I can't force anybody to give up what's reasonable for them or no, this is what I've been taught. This is what makes sense. Listen, even in what God has called to me, because I've, I've, um, I've severed soul ties with like, uh, like, you know, relationships with guys, right? Like, you know, with my kid's father, right? Where there was obviously sexual sin. But this morning, God was telling me, like, you need to, you need to break soul ties with some of these homegirls out here. And I'm like, what girls that I've been through stuff with? We've shared trauma together. We've been homeless together. We've been in the trenches together. We've been venting about these dudes together. And so now I'm nurturing this new and you want to call and, and we spend a few minutes kikiing about 
the past. Or you understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? And now I'm trying to, I, I'm nurturing my new, right? But but I'm, I'm on the phone with you talking about the old. And it's, it's, it's not about the person. You got to hear what I'm saying. You got to hear what I'm saying. It is about the saturation of the new. It is about how extra God is about the new. It is about how extreme God. Let me tell you something. And I've said it before. The crucifixion was a bloodbath. It was dramatic. Same thing as the resurrection. Same thing as the resurrection. Same thing. We haven't gotten there yet, but when we get to the book of Acts and we hear how the Holy Ghost came in, extra, extra, strong wind. Like, like I don't even want to go there because I don't want to talk about it because Pentecost is just a few days away. But I'm telling you, I'm at this point, because of how long we have been delayed, how long we have been denied, right? We have to be extra I'm going to I'm going to just briefly touch just a moment of some Old Testament, right? Just a moment, just again to reinforce the extra because in the book of Joshua, right? Here are the children of Israel having been delayed for 40 something years and on top of that you have the death of Moses. So you have all this stuff, right? You have all this stuff. And yet God is like, in three days, I need you to, to launch full force into occupying the promised land, the new. So I'm just, I'm just on here to tell you, I'm just on here to tell you that I'm extra about the new. I am. I'm extra about it. I'm extreme about it. I'm as serious about it as God is because I've missed it so many times. And I've tried to, to compromise, right? I've tried to, to yield a little bit to the old, right? It, it, you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, and in this hour, God literally said to me, if you're not extra and extreme about this thing, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. And I'm just not. I'm just not. So glory to God for whoever is, is still dealing with, to me, it doesn't matter if you full-fledged in sin or you're just dealing with a little bit of compromise. It's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? The Bible says Jesus completely absorbed. Com why, why then would I have, why then would the curse of the law have any right to me? If Galatians 3 and 13 says Jesus completely absorbed it and took my place, why then would the curse of the law have any right? And that's what we've been doing in the body of Christ. We've been looking for a way out of the old. Okay, so if you get rid of this super demon, if you annihilate this super demon, if you get rid of this, I am completely 100% pressed in focus, extra, and extreme about the new that is my life. You understand what I'm saying? I pray that you are too.